Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. I was struggling with the mix and trying to find the right EQ for the right thing. And I was thinking, why do they sound so different from each other? Well, I discovered that a long time ago, of course, that they did. But why are they doing that? And what EQ should I use where? I did some experiments and I want to share them with you in this video. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely watch it. This is not going to be scientific. It's going to be a little bit geeky, of course, because we're going to go through some technical stuff. But mostly I do this because I want to know what EQ to use where. And maybe this could help you as well. So I just made a synthesizer, a note from a synthesizer here that sounds like this. And then I put some different EQ plugins. I just copied the tracks. It's the same volume, it's the same sound. And with Logic's EQ, I boosted the low with a shelf filter at 100 Hz, 8 dB. And now it sounds like this. I did exactly the same thing with the Pro Q3 from FabFilter. That's different. It doesn't sound the same. It's very exciting. And the third one, I put the BX console SSL from Brainworks. Sounds like this now. Doesn't sound the same again. It, they sound differently, those three. It's subtle differences, but there are differences. And then I bounce the tracks and the waveforms actually looks different from each other. The first one, Logic, second one, Pro Q3, and third one, SSL. Let's listen to those bounces one after each other. First Logic, then the Fab Filter, and then the Brainworks SSL. So let's go into Plugin Doctor. I can't use Logic's plugin in Plugin Doctor because Logic's plugins aren't actually plugins. They are embedded in the Logic code, but I can use other plugins. For example, the Pro Q3 from FabFilter. And here I boosted 12 dBs at 1 kilohertz. And it looks like this on Plugin Doctor. No surprises. It boosts 12 dB at 1 kilohertz. No problem. I did the same with the BX Digital version 3 from Brainworks. Looks nearly the same and if we compare them the only difference is the Q. I put the Q to 1 I think, no, 2? Yeah, 1. I put the Q to 1 on each plugin but they can differ from each other. You have to listen to that but no no differences actually. These I call very clean EQs. Good for cutting frequencies and correcting things. So if we look at the harmonics from the fab filter, no problem there as well. We have some distortion, but it's 175 dBs below zero, minus 175 dBs, so no problem. We got a peak, I don't know why. And uh, then the BX Digital, same thing, a little more distortion, but it's minus 150 dBs, so no problem there. Then we have the Hammerstein, and I believe that the Hammerstein are the first harmonics, I think the first seven harmonics, and the distortion of those. Uh, and the Pro Q3 looks like this. Nothing, except very, very high above what we can hear there's something there and the bx digital a little more minus 90 dbs no problems at all they are clean eqs let's change plugins so here i have emulations of hardware in this case ssl channels from ssl consoles first we have the waves ssl e channel and then the BEX console SSL 4000E channel and I tried to make the same settings 12 dB boost at 1K, Q at 1 so the SSL channel looks like this well it's not the same as the other EQs first of all it's not really 1 kilohertz it's close but it's not really 
one kilohertz. How about the BX console? Oh, whoa, whoa. It's not even close to one kilohertz. And also you see this line looks electric. That means that this plugin have a lot of distortion. Could be good, could be bad. So let's look at this. Start with the harmonic analysis uh, from, from, this is waves. No problem, 175, minus 175 dBs first with a few peaks and then compare it with the BX console. More, still minus 125 dBs, so it shouldn't be a problem. Hammerstein, the harmonics. The SSL, pretty typical for a plugin that emulates hardware. How about the BX console? Whoa! I don't know if they have emulated different hardwares or not, or if some plugin have oversampling or something, but this means that they are gonna sound different from each other just by looking at it. So why not try it? I have a synth brass here. It sounds like this, just clean. And in this case, I did another thing. I lowered the lows. 200 hertz minus 10 dBs and I boosted 1k with 10 dBs Q at 1. This is the Pro Q3 from FabFilter. Sounds really, really horrible, but I'm not doing this to be gentle. I'm doing this so we can compare. Then we have the Waves SSL channel. Oh, much midi, much more mids, uh, a bit nasal uh, compared to the Pro Q3. And then we have the BX console. Different again, more low end, I think. I'm doing this to know what EQ I should use where and make decisions faster. Because the faster I can make technical decisions, the more I can concentrate on the feel and the sound of my mix. Is it important to know? No, it's not important to know. It's important to hear the difference, but it's not important to know why it's different. If you can hear the difference, you will also understand what EQ to use where. I made a small song. It's only software instruments and Apple loops, and I will show you how I use EQ corrective, clean EQs, and also a few enhancement EQs on it. So let's listen to the drums first. They sound like this. Nothing special really. I just EQ the kick drum a little bit and the snare drum a little bit. On the kick drum I used a corrective EQ because I was cutting frequencies. On the snare drum I used an enhancement EQ. In this case the BX console Neve style EQ. Just because I needed, I wanted some more color. But a thing with the snare bottom mic. I wanted some length to it, so I wanted to compress it with this uh, VC160 compressor. And just with the compressor, it sounds like this. And the low end of the sample was triggering the compressor too much. So I put a high pass before the compressor. And now the compressor behaves as I want it to behave. And then just a small corrective EQ after because there was a little bit too much mid frequencies. The room mic track, I did sort of the same thing with. It sounds like this raw. And I wanted to compress it, but I didn't want the kick drum to trigger the compressor too much. So I took away a lot of low end, also a small dip in the mids, but that's because of the sample. And then I compressed it, so with the EQ and compressor, it sounds like this. And then I was lacking low end, so I put some low end in again with another EQ, boosted a lot of low end, a little bit of highs also. That made a difference, especially for the bass drum, because the bass drum got a space. Uh, the bass I didn't do much with, I just compressed it. The grand piano, I high-passed. You can I actually high-pass a grand piano pretty much without losing the feeling of a grand piano. 
I think that's the only instrument you can high pass really high and still feel that it's a big instrument. And I was playing a lot with the left hand and it was interfering with the bass, so I had to high pass it. The acoustic guitar, it's an Apple loop. It's gonna sound a little bit weird, but I did the same thing with, I wanted to compress it. So I put a high pass filter before a compressor, just so the compressor wouldn't be triggered by the low end of the track. And then I have a muted trumpet uh, sample also. And this, in this case, I actually compressed after I have boosted an EQ. I boosted some high mids because the character of a muted trumpet is in the high mids. Normally, I use a corrective EQ before a compressor and an enhancement EQ after a compressor. That's the most, that, that's the easiest way to work, in my opinion. But sometimes, especially if I'm boosting mid or high frequencies, I compress after the EQ. Because then the EQ can tame those frequencies a little bit, so I can control the boost better. Muted trumpet without anything sounds like this. And with the EQ and compressor. Like that. The whole song sounds like this. I hope you found that interesting. If you want to help me out, please subscribe. Also like this video if you enjoyed it. But tell me, what are your favorite EQs? And do you use different EQs for different purposes? Please tell me in the comments. And please categorize the EQs if you want to. Maybe corrective EQs, enhancement EQs, and so on. To correct in Swedish is korrigera. Korrigera. <laughs> Until next time, Roger that. Yeah.